Hey class, I wanted to break down the prompt of the last major paper that you're going to write this semester. Now, it's not the last writing assignment. You're going to write a three to four paragraph poem explication on one of the poems from the Rose of View from Concrete, but that's not an essay. This is the last major paper that you will, will be writing. So I kind of wanted to make this video to kind of run through the prompt as if I were reading it to you um, in the class. All right, it says, hi class, for this essay you will apply one of the approaches, feminist or the psychoanalytic to the house on Mango Street. And step one, it says, decide on a theory, feminist or psychoanalytical and choose, psychoanalytical and choose a prompt. So last week we had those discussions, right? I created a discussion on uh, the feminist theory where you had to choose a female character and a male character and kind of talk about um, other major influences, whether positive or negative, on Esperanza. And then uh, the psychoanalytic discussion board, you had to talk about the id, the ego, and the superego. So that was kind of, you know, part of the plan to get you thinking about a possible topic. So you're going to decide on one. And a common question that I get, right, whether it be the feminist theory or the psychoanalytic theory, is it, can you write about both? And yes, because they do kind of overlap. So as long as you're taking a critical approach and if, they, and if the prompts do overlap, that's not a problem. Now, here are some prompts that I created, but you are welcome to write about something that you come up with on your own. Maybe it was something related to the discussion board or something like that. But these are basic prompts for each type. So let's start with the feminist theory prompts. It says, in a coherent essay, compare and contrast the roles of men and women in Esperanza's life. What do the various roles they play tell you about Esperanza's culture and expectations for women? Does Esperanza live in a patriarchal society? So the answer to that last question, does Esperanza, does Esperanza live in a patriarchal society? That would be your thesis statement. Not that question, but your, you know, once you come up with an answer to that, right? whether yes, she does live in a patriarchal society, or no, you want to argue against that, right? That would serve as your thesis statement. And then throughout that paper, you would compare and contrast how, you know, the roles of men and women play in the um, story. Um, second, from the feminist perspective, write an essay concerning the believability of the house on Mango Street. All right, so here's some questions to help you with that prompt. Are the characters and situations believable and realistic? Why or why not? Right? The answer to that question could be a possible thesis statement. Are gender roles subscribed to in the story? Or are they flipped upside down? I'm sorry, or are they flipped upside down? Or maybe it's a combination of both. You may, you know, maybe for some characters that, you know, they are subscribed. But maybe for one, you might know who I'm thinking of. Um, it's not, right? So there's an argument right there. Support your answers with evidence from the text. All of these papers you will use outside sources, a minimum of three, and evidence quotes from the House on Mango Street. Third prompt, write an essay explaining the impact of poverty and the roles of women in Esperanza's neighborhood. How does a resident's economic status affect the views and treatment of women in the story? All right, so I think that first question, um, you know, what kind of impact of poverty, you know, what impact of poverty does, blah, 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 okay. How does poverty impact the women in the novel? That's the question you're looking for, right? Um, you know, is it negatively? Is it positively? Is it a combination of both? And if so, right, which women does it affect positively and which does it affect negatively and why okay and then last one write a coherent essay explaining the interdependence of men and women in the house on mango street from the feminist perspective what evidence can you find that says men and women cannot exist in this life without each other all right so you know
know, first you would have to subscribe to that idea that yes, men and women are interdependent in this novel. They do depend on each other. Okay, so you could either agree with that um, generalization and support it, or you could disagree. All right, so those are just four basic um, feminist theory prompts. Now we're going to move on down to the psychoanalytic theory prompts. All right, I got three of them there. Analyze Sally as a psychological foil for Esperanza. All right, what is a foil? Well, I give you a definition. A foil is a character who contrasts with another character. All right, so you your essay right would would focus on how Sally kind of contrasts, you know, is kind of the complete polar opposite of Esperanza, and that could be discussed positively or negatively or both. Um, analyze Esperanza as a dynamic or static character. So now we're hearkening back to the beginning of the semester when we talked about those different character traits. If she is dynamic, right, remember a dynamic character is one that undergoes a, a major change. In what ways right, does Esperanza change? If she's static, right, what is or what are the forces that prevents her from changing? So again, a lot of this is your interpretation of the novel. There is no right or wrong answer here. You just have to support it. If you write about Esperanza as, as a dynamic character, be sure to include Freud's ideas of the id, ego, and superego. So here you're going to talk about right Freud's concepts and how they kind of helped perpetuate this um, this change that she goes through. And then the third the third prompt for the psychoanalytic theory, analyze Esperanza's relationships with two or three of the women she encounters in the novel. What can you infer about Sandra Cisneros and her attitudes toward her background and culture from Esperanza's account? All right, so this would be a general to answer, to write this paper. Um, you know, you would kind of, uh, uh, let's see, what can you infer? Well, this is more of, of a biographical reading. For that one, what can you infer about Sandra Cisneros, Sandra Cisneros and her attitudes toward her background and culture from Esperanza's account? So that's, you can answer that question as a paper topic, or um, you would want to create a generalized kind of sentence that kind of sums up the relationships that she has with the, with two or three of the women. So you can focus on positive relationships, right? Characters maybe like Aunt Lupe, something like that. Or you can focus on negative relationships, right? In your thesis statement. Or you can focus on a combination of both. All right, now this is an outline that, please notice, says the following is only a suggested outline intended to help you structure your essay. Whether you use it or not is entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to be watching another video where I'm going to break down one of the sample essays that I'm going to show you. And um, the student, for the most part, follows this prompt. Okay, so that's there for you. Um, so this is, you know, it, it's a big paper. Let's get down here to the, uh, the nitty gritty, the requirements. Paper should include a title and a subtitle that introduces which type of critical approach will be employed. I'll give you an example. I was always taught this way. On the left-hand side of the colon is the creative side. On the right-hand side is the academic. So if you look at the creative side of this particular title right here, tangible and intangible barriers, colon, that's the creative. Now, on the right-hand side of the colon is the academic, a feminist approach to Kate Chopin's story of an hour. So in that title, you know exactly where the writer is going, right? The, the writer is telling you that they're going to employ a feminist approach. Paper should include an introduction that summarizes the plot of the work along with the thesis that illustrates your arguments. So um, always assume. Assume your reader has never read this novel, The House on Maple Street, or novella, because it's not really considered a novel because it's so short. Minimum of three outside sources. Now, but maybe you already watched that video that I um, created about how to find sources. That's very important, right? Because I want legit academic sources. Um, it's part of the requirement for this class. Sources must be critical articles from the Delta College Library databases. 
JSTOR is a good database for literature, and I explain all that in the video. Papers must be typed in MLA format, 6 to 10 pages. Now, if you watch this video, which I hope you all have, I believe that you can do this, do this paper in five pages, and then the sixth pages would be the sixth page would be your works cited page. So as long as you get a minimum of five pages, you're going to be all right. Any less than that, I don't think it's going to be well developed enough. All right. Now as we continue on, I did a little bit of research for you, right? So it says you can find a sample article. You can use this in your essay that would work for both approaches here. So I give you a sample article right? that I did. Let's pull it up. See, hopefully uh, my internet connection has been lagging today. Right, so let me uh, kind of scroll up a little bit here. And right here is, um, you'll notice it has the same kind of title that I want you to talk about, right? The House of Memory on Mango Street, Sandra Cisneros' Counter Poetics of Space. This is a long one. This is 19 pages. But as I um, teach you in that video, right, this is where your skimming and scanning comes into play, right? You want to begin by reading the introduction of the abstract, and you'll be able to, to um, hopefully um, determine if it's going to help your project or not. So I'm going to minimize that. So that's there. That could be one of your sources. Okay. This could be one of your sources too. I found another paper, another critical essay from the databases. This one's called Of Woman Bondage, The Eroticism of the Feet in the House of Mango Street. In a few of our Zoom sessions, I think we discussed the feet, um, you know, especially in the uh, vignette chanclas. Right, where her feet didn't fit, what does that represent? So this is all about that. So I think that would work for a feminist approach. Again, these are two, so let me, right, these are two articles that you could use here. All right, and then I give you one, two, three, four sample student papers. Now I'm going to make another video where I break down a student's paper that, that where she employs of a feminist approach. Right? I'm not going to do that on this video. Um, I'm going to do that on another one. Um, and then in the to-do list, I believe, let me look at my notes. I'm hoping that you'll turn in a complete draft to a tutor before May 3rd. That's three weeks out. So this first week is all about watching my videos, reading through the prompt. The set at, By the end of the second week, we'll do a little peer review, one to two pages, where you'll post it in a discussion forum. And then by the third week, you'll have hopefully a complete draft to submit to a tutor, because I think that would be really valuable here. And then the final draft to me, I have on May 10th, but of course that date will extend all the way to the 22nd, the very last day of the semester. Um, so as you can see, you have, if you know, if you take the whole up till the 22nd, you have pretty much got five and a half weeks, something to that effect, to do this paper. But this isn't the last thing we're going to do. But like I said, I stretched it out for you guys. Um, okay. Um, there's a link for NetTutor, right? You can have tutors look at it. Uh, Canvas, you know, through Canvas, you have access to NetTutor. Um, or you can submit your, you can visit a virtual tutor through Zoom, or you can submit your paper. I'm going to click on this, the Writing Success Center. Obviously, it's a little different now. We're not on campus. But the Writing Success Center is currently located online. You can click there to visit, and it'll be like Zoom. Or... You can submit your essay the prompt, right, and have, right, you don't have to talk to a tutor through Zoom. You can submit your essay and prompt, and they will give you feedback. So either way, right, you might as well take advantage of this. Right? So we're talking May 3rd, on or before May 3rd. All right. So, like I said, um... That's pretty much it on the prompt, so I'm going to cut this video off, And but please, please, please watch. I'm going to break down one of my sample essays that I um, posted here, but these are all very good. All of these got high pass scores. Um, the first three breakdown of the feminist approach, and the last one uses of the psychoanalytic, the id, the ego, and the superego. All right.
So thanks for watching and please continue on and read these.